Hey folks, today we are taking a look at Unique Toys Zero's Zero One Warhawk. This guy was purchased at BigBadToyStore.com and I'm happy to say I got a hold of him pretty darn quickly. The box is rather small, I've got to admit. It's not a very wide box at all. Maybe only two and a half, maybe three inches wide. The box itself is rather plain, but gets the job done. I mean, you're not going to be displaying the box all that much. As you can see, here are his three modes, a nice little bio, really hard to read text. The sides of the box just pretty much show the figure and the design. I do dig the G1 graph paper design though going here. So let's open him up and take a look. Here's Warhawk in the packaging. With, with the figure comes this collector's card that has all of his tech specs on the back, and then this comic slash instruction manual. So you get an idea. It, I can see they're trying to mimic Fan's project here. I don't know if they're doing that. Well, I can't really say they're doing that great of a job, but I get what they're going for. Now, the in the uh, case here, we have the figure, his wings, the fist for the arm mode, and his sword. Packaged somewhat in beast mode, there is a little bit of assembly and transformation requi required. As you can see, though, you do end up with a rather nice beast mode. It's definitely dive bomb. The orange, black, and gold motif of the figure with a little bit of silver really works well. Overall, though, I, feel, I find that the figure is a little bit floppy. The plastic, while does feel good, has a slight cheapness to it that I am a little worried about. Now, the stand that he is currently attached to is not a stand that he comes with. I really wish he did come with his own stand. I have a Tomashi, uh, what is it called? A Tomashi Web Stand 3 or Figure Stand 3. Um, sorry, Tomashi Stage three stand set that I've used to actually display him. The figure itself doesn't feel that big either. I've got the Gen 1 figure right here to my right, and I'll show you a comparison of the beast modes. The one thing I am very, very worried about are these feathers, the tips of his wings. They definitely have a gold plastic syndrome look to them, or they are not swirly like the gold plastic syndrome figures have been known to be. I'm just really worried about them being, uh, well, not long lasting, we'll say. Overall, the beast mode looks pretty good, very accurate to the original G1 figure. The tail, uh, the tail wing is on a double hinge, so you can get the tail wing out from away from the body, which is a nice touch. The beast mode looks pretty good. So, posability in beast mode. His head is posable, so he can move side to side, up and down, his mouth opens. Legs are somewhat posable, so you've got some posability there. Claws open and close. Wings can be folded back somewhat and folded forward. Posability there in the wing, and then on the inside of the wing, and then each individual feather is posable, but only so much so. They're designed to collapse all the way like that. However, I have noticed that these hinge points are kind of loose. Um, I'm really very worried that these hinges are just going to become way too loose to hold the actual weight of the wings. As you can see, it's already starting to lose it on this on the wing on the left side or the left side of the figure uh, build quality it's not too bad but i do worry about its longevity so here's warhawk with dive bomb from generation one as you can see there's not that much difference in difference in size in fact i think the dive bomb figure is a little bit taller yeah, just a little bit. He also has a longer or wider wingspan than the Unique Toys figure does. Very weird. But I think the Unique Toys figure has a little bit more detail to him. Warhawk's transformation into robot mode is very similar to the original G1 figure. To start with, we'll collapse the feather wings together and then fold the wings up. I like to fold them back a little bit. Then take the bird head and fold that up to expose the robot head. 
And unfortunately, it doesn't fold all the way straight up. You can only fold it back so far. Grab the arms, and they're supposed to easily pull out from the body, but I have found that moving the wing, the rear wing out of the way and just turning the hips will actually enable you to much more easily pull out the arms and then extend them. And then flip out the fists and continue turning the hips all the way around. Take the talons and collapse them and then take the upper leg and pull them straight down over the talons and flip out the feet. And that is the transformation for Warhawk. And here we have the robot mode for Warhawk. And I've got to say, it's not bad. It just feels not well detailed. And that's just a personal opinion. I don't feel that this guy is well detailed at all. It, it's kind of boring, really. I will, however, say that I think his sword is awesome. It looks like it's right out of He-Man or something. I really, really like this sword. But the figure itself seems rather plain. And I'm, I'm not really complaining here, but I feel that there needs to be more paint apps on this guy. It's just a personal opinion. Head sculpt is okay. Head sculpt is rather boring, to be honest. Uh, it's only a two-tone head sculpt. The eyes are colored red, though. I will admit I do appreciate that, especially when compared to the original G1 head. I, I mean, there's really nothing there. Warhawk is fairly poseable. His head is on a ball joint. Shoulders are on a swivel for forwards and back, in and out. Then there's a 90 degree bend at the elbow. Hips do have, there is torso articulation. There is hip articulation. A swivel right underneath the hip that is very tight. And knees do bend at 90 degrees. There's no foot articulation. However, there is a major issue with this figure. Now, I don't know if this is with all of the figures, but it is with mine. The tooling on the ball joint is odd. I don't know if you can hear the creaking it's making, but the ball joints naturally want to snap back to this position that's a few degrees off from being straight. See, the legs should be at this perfectly inline position. But when I put the figure down, it automatically, or the weight of the wings and the top of the figure, make the ball joint snap back down to this position where it's maybe five degrees, maybe yeah, about five degrees but leaning backwards. And that causes some issues, especially if you want to po pose the wings back like that. He's just going to fall right over. The other issue I have with the figure is... I think the wing placement is off. I think the wings should be a little higher, just maybe above the shoulder line. That's just a personal aesthetic opinion. But overall, the figure looks pretty good. But the ball joint issue with the hip is a real, real disappointment because I've poised him a, or tried posing him a couple of times and the ball joints just slide back into that position and he falls right over. Before we get to the last mode, I wanted to show you Warhawk versus G1 Dive Bomb. G1 Dive Bomb towers over Warhawk. And that's a little bit crazy to think that a G1 figure is going to be so much bigger than a $75 figure. But I really can't complain all that much because, well, it is a third-party figure. So, oh well. It does worry me a bit for uh, the Warlord combination, though. To perform the combination, we will return uh, Warhawk to his sort of beast mode. We'll get about halfway there. Fold the head down to hide the face. Fold the fists up. Push the arms up into the shoulders. Fold the tail wing just out of, pl just out of the way. And I do like the paint on the tail wing. I like to turn the hips so that it gives you easy access to sliding the arms in. And then fold up the feet. Then we'll take the wings, and the wings do snap off, and they snap right off, and I'm really worried, as I said earlier, uh, the plastic is already starting to shave off, and it looks like it already broke a little bit right there, and I've had the figure out of the box for, oh, 20 minutes, 
So these are pieces that I'm really, really worried about. So just to get it off, and this is not easy either. Oh. Okay, that piece did not break, thankfully. As you can see, all three pieces are there. Unfortunately, that one already broke. So then we take this like this, and then we will fold out that piece. And there is a way, supposedly, to get these tail wings. Ah, there is an extra swivel there that I did not see. So you could swivel the entire abdomen such that the tail, fe the tail feathers are pointing to the front of the figure. And then make sure that the screw hole is pointing forward. Let's get those arms back in place. And then we take the super spiky hand and attach that to the bottom of the figure's feet. So here we have the completed arm form or left arm that is Warhawk. As you can see, there are a lot of spikes here on the hand. The hand has 16 individual spikes, not counting the fingertips. The hand itself is actually very poseable. There's a ball joint there at the wrist, so you've got plenty of movement there. The individual figure fingers are, are multi-jointed. However, when posing them, you will stab yourself. This is a very pointy hand. Just be careful. I was wondering if you could attach or have him hold the sword. However, you can have him hold it, but he does not hold it very well at all. As I said, the individual joints are very poseable. The thumb, you have uh, up and down movement, and then you've got closing movement with uh, two different joints. And each figure has a ball joint at the base, and then two additional joints, like a human hand, so you could get a very nice looking fist going. Like I, but, like I said, be warned, you are going to poke yourself with this. So, can this... Why is the head... Why, why is the head jiggling like that? I wasn't doing that earlier. Okay, so he's got a little bit of schizophrenia there. All right, anyway. So, can this combine with either Hercules or Giant? Well, we have Giant right here, missing an arm. So, let's go ahead, plug him in, and... Ow. As you can see, the peg is much too small for the hole. You might be able to get him to balance, sort of, but it's not really going to work out all too well. It just, it can't hold it. And forget using Hercules because the arms have a hole and the peg is coming out of the hook unit, or Dr. Crane unit, on uh, Hercules. So, yeah, you can't have a bird arm there. Compared to his G1 counterpart, he is significantly more articulated and he is much more in line with that of a humanoid proportion. I don't have the fist on me, it's in the box, sorry. But it looks okay. I just am really worried about the head being all wobbly like that. Overall, I cannot recommend Unique Toys Warhawk. There are a lot of good ideas in this figure. However, the execution is far from ideal. As you've already seen, I seem to have broken two of the parts of the figure just from simple transformation. Yes, I realize that these figures can be fragile, but I didn't expect it to just be broken right out of the box the way it is. Also, the plastic, as I've said, as I've been playing with it and as I've been reviewing it, just doesn't feel right. And that may just be me, as my fingers are all tingly now from handling the Fisto spikes. But for $75, you're not getting a top quality figure. Now, recently, Mastermind Creations has revealed their full paint scheme for their version of G1 Dive Bomb, and that seems to be a lot better detailed than Warhawk. I wasn't planning on getting that, but after playing with this guy, I am definitely planning now on getting that version of this fig of Dive Bomb. 
and I really am a little bit upset because I was really looking fit forward to this guy. I was really looking forward to getting a hold of him, playing with him, and seeing how he is. Unfortunately, I think Unique Toys has swung and really missed here. Will I be getting the rest of the Unique Toys Predaking set or Warlord set? I don't know. Probably just because at this point, I think I feel I need to see it through for you guys. I really think I need to get all of these so you guys know what you're going to be getting into when you get these things. Man, uh, I am very disappointed with this guy. I really am. I'm going to be putting him back in the packaging and holding on to him there and not displaying him because I'm just too damn worried that he is going to fall apart if I leave him out on his own. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this review of Unique Toys Warhawk. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think down and below in the comments, and I will catch you next time.